Hey everybody, it's Jason Vlaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And my subscribers have aware me that Scooby, the OG, the original fitness YouTuber, went in pretty hard on Ken Body. Went in pretty hard on Ken Body, a.k.a. the Bruce Wayne at the fitness industry. All right, I'll bring it back. Everyone loves it when I do this. You know, because he's the Bruce Wayne that I'm the Bane. wondering what would break first, your spirit or your body. All right, but joking aside, Scooby went in pretty hard on Greg. He went in pretty hard on Greg. Uh, the reason for it, supplements, neck training stuff, some of the false claims. Now, me personally, I don't really have a strong dislike for Greg. I, actually, my biggest beef with him these days is supplement scams, right? Because we all know that for the most part, supplements don't work. They're overpriced. Uh, he's now claiming that his over-the-counter products are going to help you with erections, your dick growing, all this other nonsense. Right, guys? That's not true. That's not reality. Just like he did with intermittent fasting. Look, I mean, intermittent fasting is a great dietary tool. It can be very, very useful for caloric uh, management. It can be very useful for people who do want to have an evening social life. Right? We all agree with this. And he does make that work for himself. And it does work. It's useful for those roles. It doesn't have the medical claims that he said, and that's what Scooby called him on. You know, was originally uh, making all these claims about intermittent fasting that aren't actually true. Uh, there's some data to support some potential useful benefits to the fasting, but it, when it's been looked at more closely, those benefits seem to be correlated just with caloric control and fat loss, again, due to managing your calories better. That's what it comes down to. It doesn't seem to have any magical fat loss properties. It doesn't have any magical properties to improve uh, blood glucose or lipid profiles or anything else other than caloric management. Now, if you find it useful for caloric management, then hey, great, it will probably help you lose some body fat. Um, but so will any strategy that helps you manage your intake consistently, right? Anything that allows for diet adherence is going to be a valuable tool for managing body fat for people. That, that's simple reality. No one's in denial of that, but that's where its magic seems to be, and it doesn't work for everyone. Uh, but he went through all of that, and that's the thing that bothers me, too. That's one of the things I'm going to be the hardest on on uh, Greg is about the supplement con man stuff. Because you, the fact that he promotes big basic exercises, the fact that he promotes the press, he's got a strong upper body, and he is trying to work on getting his lower body stronger now, uh, even though he kind of uh, denounced that and tried to claim silly nonsense like squats and deadlifts will give you not a superhero physique. Uh, but, you know, then you look at every superhero and, hell, you even look at the guys from 300. That's a perfect example. So I got my Spartan helmet here. All of them had massive quads. When they were doing those scenes walking forward, they all had big legs. Those guys all squat. I promise you a lot of those guys could squat at least 400. At least. So he kind of made those claims, but he does promote some good stuff, right? The fact that for most people, exercise minimalism is probably ideal getting strong on the big exercises, selecting the right big exercises for the proportions you want, uh, that's all reasonable stuff. Pushing the importance of performance, right? That's, that's valuable. I'll give credit for that. Um, and the thing that I liked was the old Greg, right? The old Greg. What was it he said years ago? Before he started selling supplements, he said supplements are basically useless, right? They are, outside of a handful of things. Like, I mean, I use a few things. Right now, I use creatine. I use magnesium, I use vitamin D3, but I have specific needs for those things, right? They fill a certain role in my diet, uh, and mainly I take all those things just to make sure I don't lose water weight on low carbs, because I don't want to lose intermuscular water. It affects my performance. That's actually the only reason I take some of those things, right? Uh, if I was on a different diet, I might not take those things. So supplements are just there to supplement your diet. They're not magical. And for the most part, uh, anything that works is relatively inexpensive. But he said that years ago, right? He said it years ago that supplements are a ripoff. And I respected him a hell of a lot more then. And that's kind of funny because now he's flip-flopped. He's flip-flopped from, he used to be anti-supplement, which I gave props for, but he was against squats and deadlifts, which again, you need to be chastised. You need to be made fun of. You're going to talk about being manly. You're going to talk about anything like that. Uh, if you want to attempt to be manly or masculine in any way and you don't do squats and deadlifts, 
I don't want to hear that shit. You're going to get made fun of. You deserve to be mocked at that point, and reasonably so. But he had the anti-supplement stance, and at least he promoted heavy exercises for the upper body weight, pull-ups, the standing press, all right, all these big exercises that are extremely valuable. That's where your focus needs to be. For, for 95% of your training needs to be based around these big exercises. And anything else is just there for filling a little bit of weak links. Not that important. But he was also anti-supplement. Now he's flip-flop. Now he's doing box squats with a decently heavy weight. He's trying to deadlift again. He's training his lower body. But now he's scamming people with supplements. And they, supplements are a scam. He knows they're a scam. He's jumping in on the market there, right? Because everyone else is and he sees a business opportunity. And Greg is a businessman. I'll give him that. But people need to understand that. Greg is a businessman. He is not a fitness expert. He's not even a fitness guru. Because he, he doesn't really give you that much useful information. He really doesn't. He doesn't. Some of it's not bad, but I mean, again, this whole thing that he was promoting people not squat and deadlift. Now, he's jumping on this whole trendy neck thing, and Scooby did nail him on that, of showing that, look, just flexing your traps makes your neck look bigger. So the little bit of difference you saw in his before and afters is just him flexing his traps. Nothing special in his training. And it kind of goes back to the point of, you have someone like Greg who's promoted minimalism all this time, right? And it works. He's promoted minimalism all this time. He developed a nice physique. He developed a good physique, good body, doing training minimalism, training three days a week, just specific exercises, focused on performance, moderate volume. That works. 90% of guys out there, that's all they ever need to do, almost irrespective of what their goals are. He promoted that. It worked for him, but now he's going to jump on this trendy-ass adding neck work. I mean, if you're going to be a minimalist, that's the stupidest shit you could do. And I don't want to hear anything about, oh, well, contact sport guys do it. So what? I don't see Greg or anyone else doing the other stuff contact sport guys do. Because a lot of the guys I've known and who are in contact sports and combat sports have 500, 600, 700 pound squats. Why aren't you getting your squat up to 500? Right? I mean, if you want to imitate what people in combat sports are doing or contact sports, such as American football, you probably need to get your squat up to 500 pounds. You probably need to get your power clean up to 300 pounds, right? You need these lower body lifts. Where's that stuff? Do that stuff before you start worrying about the neck training. I mean, if you want to emulate what guys in contact sports are doing. But none of these guys promoting this silly neck bullshit are doing that. And I'm not saying it doesn't have its place in contact sports. But for everyone else out there, you're just risking getting sleep apnea. And you're throwing in extra fluff exercises that probably aren't going to help. Because most of you guys are going to build more than a big enough neck by doing the overhead press. By doing rows. By doing cleans. By doing deadlifts. Your big basic exercises. You know, it seems like all these people want to spend all this time worrying about shit of what can make me look big right? What can I do to make me look big instead of just getting big, right? Why don't you guys just focus on getting big instead of saying, how can I trick people into thinking I'm big? Maybe if I just train my neck and my traps, people will think I look big. Uh, no, why don't you just get fucking big? Get under a heavy ass bar and get strong and do plenty of volume on your big basic exercises. You're going to get big, does that mean you're going to look big when there's a camera zoomed in on you? Maybe not. It might not help you there. But when you're walking down the street or you walk into a room or you're standing next to other people, being big is going to make you look bigger than working on some little tiny thing that you think is going to make you look big in a close-up photo. Right? There's a big, big difference. A big difference. I get that. I mean, people stand here when they see me on camera chilling, sitting down. They're like, hey, you're not that big. I don't think you have much muscle. Then people meet me in real life, and it's a little bit different of a story. Uh, they're like, oh, shit. So, difference between a looking big versus being big. And what I would tell you guys out there, unless you're trying to make money just when there's a camera zoomed in on you for photo shoots where they can just see you from here up or just see you sitting down. Okay, maybe, maybe if your income is going to depend on that, but if you're trying to actually look big in person walking down the street, you should probably get big. And the silly ass neck training bullshit, uh, it is, it's another trend that's going to go away. And, and again, people need to understand, I'm not saying it doesn't have its place in certain sports, but for guys who are trying to look big, it's the stupidest shit I've ever heard of. It's the stupidest, trendiest, gym cell virgin loser shit I have ever heard of. Just get 
big. Instead of trying to look big. What can I do to look big? No, just get fucking big. Get your press up to 200 pounds. Get your bench up to 300 pounds. Get your squat up to 400. Get your weighted pull-ups up to 100 pounds from a dead hang. All right, you'll be pretty big. There's your start. There's your base. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.